let's move on to the next presentation. And I would like to ask everyone to post a question on Slack channel and follow up on the answers. Uh, the last but not least uh, of our presentation is uh, going to be handled by Lukas Spanger, uh, who is a rising PhD, uh, five-year PhD student at UC Berkeley, advised by Costas Spanos, and is currently in an AI residency at Google X. He works on transactive reinforcement learning generally throughout um, power systems. Um, so the floor is yours, Lucas. Please share I, your slides and. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, but I think I, I think I wasn't clear. Lucas isn't going to present in this mirror, but I am. Okay, okay. Yeah. I I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, I, I can just introduce myself. So <laughs> sure, hi, go everyone. ahead. Hi everyone. I'm a third slash fourth year PhD student in electrical engineering and computer sciences at Berkeley, and I work with Professor Pula and Professor Spanos on. DERs, pretty generally demand response and managing consumer aggregations. So I'm really excited to be here and listening to all of the great talks in the conference and also presenting my work along with Lucas on pricing and consumer aggregations using reinforcement learning. And um, I know we're running short on time, so I am going to breeze a bit through re the reinforcement learning specifics of the talk. I'm happy to answer any questions later and I would also like to refer you to our paper for more details. So um, the reason we are thinking about this problem and the reason that so many papers in this conference exist is because we are increasingly seeing a rise in distributed energy resources, specifically because climate change mitigation is top of mind for everyone. And renewable resources are fast becoming cheap and accessible for homeowners and building owners to employ for their own uses. This is how... Uh, homeowners or uh, building owners, when they have rooftop solar or when they have battery backups or they have EV charging, they can, uh, they can enhance their capability and no longer remain consumers, but also become presumers. That is, they can supply energy back to the grid or supply other services uh, back to the grid. However, the rise of these resources is a pretty big problem for utilities and distribution system operators. And the reason is that a large part of the grid is not designed for energy backflow, particularly when we see things like coordinated energy usage locally. For example, everyone comes home, plugs in their EVs at 5 p.m. That can actually blow and trip, uh, sorry, that can actually trip distribution transformers. And these are real problems that jurisdictions across the US are facing. And so one way that utilities react to these challenges is that they eliminate them. They remove net metering incentives, they ban any backflow of energy, and uh, in general, they try to remove all of the incentives that exist for consumers to invest in these resources. That's, that's not a good situation for any one of us because uh, more solar and more batteries just means more renewables and cleaner energy. And this is where presumer aggregations can really help. So here I've presented one model of a presumer aggregation, which is social net metering. The idea is that all of these participants that may have a variety of assets, someone may have only storage, someone may have only generation, um, can trade energy with each other or, or basically trade energy with a central aggregator and then present the net energy consumption to the utility as a single entity. And this can enable resources that are underutilized to become better utilized. For example, if, if there's a resource that is only being used for a single building, it can now be time shared or, or the energy in it can be sold to other consumers around that, around the asset owner. And there are two main control paradigms um, for these, for such applications. The first one is sort of like microgrid control, which is direct control. It assumes that there is some sort of centralized dispatching mechanism or, or some sort of central authority that can control generation and storage. So this would be, for example, if, if there were a central operator or a central battery management system that could charge and discharge batteries at will. The other paradigm is transactive control. And the reason this is important is because when you have individual asset owners that are interested in minimizing their own costs, they may not really like to cede control of their independently owned batteries or independently owned generation resources to a third party. 
And the way transactive control works around this is it uses a price signal to reflect operational um, to reflect operational signals to the participants. And there are there's been a lot of work in this area. And I know that some papers earlier some talks earlier in this session touched on it. For example, methods like ADMM and uh, there are other iterative pricing heuristics as well uh, that are trying to solve this um, aggregation control problem. The drawback of some of these methods is that they require back and forth communication. For example, the aggregator communicates a price, the presumers calculate their net power consumption and communicate it back to the aggregator, which then updates the price. And so that was my uh, lit review. And so what we're really looking for is a way to avoid that back and forth of uh, price and power consumption communication, but still manage to use prices. And that's the reason that we turn to reinforcement learning. So this is a bit of a background on reinforcement learning that I will just skip through. The research question that we are asking is, can an RL agent be trained to offer prices that benefit both the presumers and the aggregation as a whole? And to answer this question, we set out to model um, such an aggregation. So the presumers that we model are basically cost minimizing agents. They're trying to minimize that net cost of purchasing energy, which is reflected by the buy price multiplied by the net demand. That's the Z plus. Um, plus the, sorry, minus the revenue from selling energy back to the aggregator or back to the grid which is recorded at the sell price and Z minus, which is their net supply. We also incorporate battery degradation costs. And of course, there are battery operation constraints. These presumers will, the way they interact with the aggregator is that the aggregator broadcasts the price and the presumers respond to it by optimizing their battery operation. And we model two different aggregator objectives uh, to test out our RL hypothesis. The first one is a for-profit aggregator, which is as simple as it sounds. It's just trying to maximize its own profit. And its profit is basically the revenue from sales to presumers minus the cost of procuring energy from the utility. And you can see that there are two different prices over here. This is, oops, the lambdas are the aggregator set prices. And the pi is the price of energy when the aggregator buys from the supplier of last resort, which is the utility. And the aggregator prices are constrained to lie within the utility price price gap, because if the aggregator is a worse option than the outside utility, no presumer will ever be incentivized to participate in this um, social net metering scheme. So and that's the price constraint that the aggregator has when setting its um, prices. Now, the market solving aggregator is, is a potential aggregator that might exist if, uh, for example, the presumers are cooperative or, or they come together to form an energy market where they want the price to reflect the true market equilibrium price that would have been if, if the presumers had been submitting demand and supply bids. And one equation that the market equilibrium price would satisfy is that the inflow of money to the aggregator would be equal to the outflow. And the absolute value of that is what we try to get this aggregator to minimize. And as for our RL algorithm of choice, we choose actor critic architectures, uh, so soft actor critic architectures, which are basically actor critic with an entropy maximizing framework. And what we observe is that our SAC agent is able to learn the objectives in all scenarios. So we try out a bunch of different presumer configurations and investment uh, levels. And we see that slowly but surely our, our, our training curves demonstrate that the reward is increasing and the, the sorry, the RL agent is learning. For the market solving controller specifically, we are able to see that uh, we do get close to near equilibrium prices. And we can observe that by looking at the aggregator profit. So as compared to some iterative pricing mechanism that we borrowed from literature, we can see that the RL agent is able to get a bit closer uh, to zero profit. And for the for profit aggregator, we show that it doesn't only increase the profit of the aggregator, but also reduces the overall system costs. That is both the aggregator as well as the presumer participants are better off by participating in this aggregation. 
so um our main our main theme in this work was trying out rl to see if we could have a one shot pricing mechanism as opposed to some sort of iterative pricing mechanism and taking this this control algorithm taking this pricing scheme to a realistic real world prosumer aggregation is going to be a really difficult task and we we recognize that and with the help of our reviewers we have identified a few key challenges that will need to be addressed before um before this can be implemented in real life so i'm going to go through them really briefly and i i would like to refer you to our paper for um, for more details on each one of these so the first concern is safety which is what if the prices cause operation that violates local system constraints for example power constraints or voltage uh, or, or exceeds the allow, allowable voltage uh, we propose to project the prices onto a learned region that's definitely safe and that may lead to suboptimal prices but it would guarantee safety for data efficiency we propose using offline rl or pre training rl in simulation before taking it to before taking it to a real prosumer aggregation we cannot guarantee optimality of a price that the rl controller outputs but what we can do is bound the suboptimality using policy certificates and this is an active area of work in rl and potentially some of the research in that area can extend to providing guarantees for our controller as well um and for risk management we 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 propose using risk um, risk metrics like cvar and adding it to the objective so that um uh, sorry to model risk averse behavior for our aggregator with that i'd like to end my talk um thank you all for listening and i look forward to your questions okay thank you very much um for the great presentation are there any questions I don't see any question in this live channel. Um, if you have questions, you can also raise hand here. Okay. Um, I think then also because we are almost uh, close to the end of the session, we are actually sharp at the end of the session. I would like to ask everyone to send their follow up questions on the slack channel i'm sure that there will be a lot of questions and thank you again for uh for the great presentations all of the uh, four presenters here uh i hope you enjoyed the session um yeah i will pass it on to michella or herman if they're here or maybe yes, uh, other yes. announcements okay